right, here now to respond is Saul Anousis, senior consultant to the National Popular Vote Initiative. Saul, uh, you're an old friend, and it's wild that you're, you're doing this because you and Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg and George Soros' kids are all on the same side. So why did a good Republican from Michigan decide to throw in with all those characters for what, the well, betterment so, of the country? Yeah, so there's a little bit of a nuance here in the sense that the Democrats do want to eliminate the Electoral College. There's two proposals out there. One that, as you mentioned, the Democrats have been pushing to eliminate the Electoral College. And then one that I'm proposing and working with, which basically is a bipartisan approach that basically wants to use the national popular vote and, and keep the Electoral College. So you've got two different proposals that a lot of people can yeah, use all the time. Right, but you, you claim you don't want to abolish Electoral College. We don't claim it, we just don't. Well, but the problem is, if states, and your plan would yeah. states would have the right not to give their delegates to the person who wins in the state, to the candidate who right. wins in the state, so, they would be obligated or sure. could vote for the candidate who won the most popular right. vote. So. In other words, if, if uh, Trump wins Texas, then under your plan, if this passed the state, the state legislature in Texas, Texas they would say, oh, no, they're all going to go to Kamala Harris. Right. If, if well, that, what, how, does that, how is that fair to the people of Texas? Well, it's very fair because what, what happens is we want to make sure that every voter in every state is politically relevant in every election. And under the current system, four out of five Americans live in flyover states. So today, for all practical purposes, 95 to 90 percent of all the money is spent in 10 states or less. And we elect basically the president of the battleground states of America versus the president of the United States of America. Well, Obama got elected twice. What do you mean? The battleground states? He won, a, he won a fairly broad section of the country. But it doesn't matter. But it, look, you and I could sit down within three minutes and identify where 40 to 42 states are going to vote in, in the 2020 election. Right? And so both campaigns are going to basically campaign in probably 10 states But the states framers wanted it that way, Saul. No, the you framers did not, want, the framers do do not want it that way. That's just the, not true. Okay. The, so Article Alexander, 2, Section 1 of the Constitution. Yes, know it well. Says the state legislature shall, shall meet. Yeah, right, shall meet. Decide, right. right. So what they basically said is the state legislatures and their selfish best interests will determine how their electors are chosen. And what the framers wanted was a series of white male property owners to sit around a table and decide who the president is. So we're going back to race. No, no, we're not. You're, you said what the framers wanted, right? No, no, no. But the but, current system. Yeah, but that, but that actually is funny that you raise that because a lot of the people who you claim you're not associated with or you don't really agree with, you're basically the outcome is going to be the same. It's, not gonna it's be going the, to be making the electoral college null and void. It's not going to be the same. Look, well, okay, it, so it, the, the whole system of Trump would would Trump have gotten elected? Absolutely. Your plan? Absolutely. I how, agree. How, as as how President Trump be? said, he said if it would have been a national popular vote, he would have campaigned around the entire country. President Trump only campaigned in 13 states, right? So you expect people in the other 13. Why would anyone campaign in Iowa or in New Hampshire under a national popular because vote? Because when... In the top four most populous states in the country are 36% of okay. the population. So, so you believe, Why? like, how about the top 50 cities in the country? Almost all of them, the top 20 is where all the population Okay, is. so the top 50 make up what percentage of the national popular vote? Uh, it doesn't matter. Sure if, it does. the top, no. if the top 50 cities... There's a limited amount of time, Saul. So. Okay, the so the top is, 50 cities you, make up 15% of the vote. Why do the you top, want to disenfranchise I don't want America. to disenfranchise. I want every voter in every state to be politically relevant and count. Today, if you live in a flyover state... They're if not relevant. They're not well, politically they irrelevant. Right now, if you live in... A, look, we know today where Utah's going to vote. We know where Oklahoma's going to vote. We know where California's going to vote. So, we know where Texas yeah, is going to vote. Yeah, because they're conservative so states. We don't, they, we don't campaign there. So we're not asking, we're not, we're not well, campaigning to them, we're not asking them where they stand on the issues, we don't care about what no, because we they, pander if, to the battleground well, the, the, the problem with your argument is the folks who are on your side are all globalists who want to... It's not, it's not true. Okay. I mean, Fred Thompson believe, agrees with us, Newt Gingrich Fred agrees Thompson? with us, Tom Tancredo... Fred Thompson is dead. He, did, he is, so he yeah. did believe okay. with us well, before he died. Well, he can't be having an opinion on well, this Well, he right had now. an nice opinion driver. before he died, but Okay, that's okay, but too. But the people who are behind the big efforts, the big money efforts, who pays your salary, for instance? So national popular vote? Okay, and George Soros's son mm. and daughter's foundation is uh, given to you, correct? I believe his son's... $1 million, yeah, correct? Son's the Tides Foundation, $25,000. Beyond that, I really uh, don't know. Stephen every, Silverstein Foundation, a yeah. $1 million. Who in that group is a conservative? Uh, none of them, but Tom Golisanos, who gave over $10 million, is a conservative, pro-life, anti-tax. The first guy, the government. guy who runs it now, Coscos, he's John a big Kozol. liberal, yeah, given $14 million dollars to yeah. the Democrats. Yeah, he's a big liberal. So you could throw, so you could throw so, a few So just because there's Republican a bunch of liberals, voices. but just because there's a bunch of liberals backing it, you think it's a bad idea. So you actually think people are going to campaign in, in any more states Absolutely. because of your plan? Yeah, I don't because, think anyone's understanding your dis distinction. Well, the Electoral College will be meaningless. 
under your, th and it that's will just not. That's not true. That's just it, not true. And it's it will no less not, meaningless than it is today. And it will not withstand constitutional scrutiny. But I'll be looking forward yeah, to seeing the argument. It'll be a lot of fun. But it's, but you know, I think there's just a yeah, lot of misconceptions. All right. All right, it is misconceptions, but we'll continue to follow it. And I appreciate Saul, an old friend from a long time ago. All right. I